All right, just 10 days until the midterms, so candidates on both sides are trying to make their case. So who made the most convincing arguments this week and who stumbled? Michael Maslansky is the author of The Language of Trust. He joins us with the best and worst political comments of the week. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Let's start in Oklahoma, where the gubernatorial can, uh, candidate on the Democratic side made a very interesting point. Listen. I want to make this clear. I am an Oklahoma Democrat. Oklahoma Democrats are conservative. We are not extreme. You can vilify the East and West Coast Democrats, but do not insult the God-fearing, flag-waving Democrats of Oklahoma. Sounds almost like a Republican, doesn't it? Absolutely. I mean, in a conservative state, what a great soundbite to leave her voters with and deposition the opposition as extreme. All right. So you think that one was effective. You also think that something Sarah Palin did this week was effective. Let's listen. We don't work for you anymore, Mr. Reed. Enjoy your retirement. We don't work for you anymore, Nancy Pelosi. You're fired. And Mr. Obama and your czars, you're next, because now we can see 2012 from our house. All right, what did you like about that one? Well, I mean, she's just great at firing up her base. And, and think about what she packs in there. She's got a Donald Trump reference to, to The Apprentice, and she's taken her weakness and turned it into a strength that we can see 2012 from her house. That's something that people will, will walk away from that with, will, will listen to as we go into the last couple of weeks of the election. Taking us back to the I Can See Russia from Alaska. All right, here's what did not work, you say. Christine O'Donnell made a lot of headlines with what she said in the uh, Delaware Senate debate. Listen. Where in the Constitution is separation of church and state? It's in. Let me just clarify. Just Please. You're telling me that the separation of church and state is found in the First Amendment. Uh, the crowd seemed to chuckle. The media took it in a different direction. What was the problem here? Well, here's the thing. She was right. It doesn't say separation of church and state in the Constitution. The problem is, is that there's this narrative around Christine O'Donnell that she's not so bright, that she doesn't know what's going on uh, 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 in politics in Washington. And this just contributed to that narrative because she was parsing words uh, and no one's going to pick up on that, on that, uh, that fine a story. Mm. Uh, you also say that one of the ones that didn't work so well was something that Nancy Pelosi did with the United Steelworkers Union. Let's listen. We're talking about addressing the disparity in our country of income, where the wealthy people continue to get wealthier and some other people are falling out of the middle class when we want to bring many more people into the middle class. But that disparity is not just about wages alone. That disparity is about ownership and equity. It's all about fairness in our country. Okay, I mean, those are her, some of her standard points. What's the problem with those? Well, you know, I think she's trying to play the Republican uh, code word. She's trying to pick up ownership and equity and use them to her advantage, and they just fall flat. I mean, it doesn't fit within that statement. She's talking about really bringing, bringing everybody down, to be fair, as opposed to bringing people up, uh, and, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. All right, well, Michael Maslansky, your book is The Language of Trust. Thanks so much for coming in to uh, show us all this.